Now I don't want to get too bogged down in this, but I'll just give a brief explanation of the two basic methods of connecting appliances or equipment in a circuit. Firstly, there's the individual light, and there is only one light in the circuit, and that is neither series nor parallel. That's just how it's connected. But if I have two lights, and I join them together in that configuration, that is called parallel. Wrong way around. You can see they both work simultaneously at the same brilliance. Now that is because in a parallel circuit the voltage in all legs of the circuit is the same. And that is how the jug and the toaster and every other appliance in the world is connected. Every household, every factory, everything that works on the mains system is connected in parallel. That is because the voltage is the same in all circuits. And I'll we'll draw up a circuit later. The current can be different in the circuit because we can have different resistances. Like the jug draw, drew 8 amps, the toaster probably drew about 10. But they can both work satisfactorily alongside of each other. Because in a parallel circuit, the voltage in every in each circuit is the same, but the current can vary. The other way of connecting is called series. You can see I've connected them in line. I've got coming in one and out the other, which is different to this one, where the two are simply connected together in parallel. Now, if I join this one together, you'll see it doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because in a series connection the voltage is divided between the resistance of the two components. For example, I can demonstrate that that one works by itself, but the two together don't. And the reason for that is this is a 3 volt battery. These require 3 volts to work and the voltage is divided between them, so there is one and a half volts each, so they won't work. So now let's, that's enough of that. We'll go and draw it up on a piece of paper and show you how it works and what symbols we use and how to draw the circuit. When we're drawing electrical circuits, we don't actually draw the components. For instance, it would be difficult to draw that battery, and even if I could, there's that type of battery, there's the double A, there's the D cell, there's a 6 volt gel cell, here's a 12 volt gel cell, here's another type of 12 volt gel cell. So, as you can see, we couldn't actually draw a battery in our circuit or a switch because there's a million different types of switches. So we use symbols to represent the battery. Okay, so let's see how we actually draw the circuit. Generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, and if you do it this way, you will not be criticised. You start with the power supply on the left and the load on the right. In this case I'm going to draw the simple circuit that we had before of the battery and the light. Okay, as I said we use symbols to indicate different things in circuits. A battery is generally drawn with two lines per cell. That is only one cell, so it will only have two lines. And that is the positive. Now the positive is almost always on the top. You can draw it the other way, but if you draw it with the positive on the top, you will not be criticised. 
our wires, we can't draw wires, so they're just represented by lines on the drawing. And a switch can be represented in a couple of ways. Either by a bar across there, indicating normally open or normally closed, or a switch up like that. Now, either way is acceptable. This one is generally more often used for relays. So if you use this one for a switch, you will not go wrong. OK. On symbols, we normally indicate what they are. So the battery, we would call it B1. The switch would normally call, be called SW1 or just S1. It just indicates what it is on the drawing because in some circuits you will have multiple switches and sometimes multiple batteries. Then we go across to the light. Now we normally put the load on the right hand side so in this case an LED is generally drawn thusly, with a couple of arrows coming out of it. We can't actually draw that LED, so we draw a symbol to represent it. And that is our simple drawing. We could call that Q1 or LED1, whichever you like to call it. Now that is the simple circuit as it is there. There's the battery, there's the switch, just lifting the wire away from the battery. There's the LED and there's the return wire. Your circuits will vary, but the components or the way it is laid out won't vary all that much. If you draw it like this, you can't go wrong. We've just had a look at a very simple electrical circuit. So let's up the ante a little bit. Let's have a look at a parallel circuit. To simplify it, think about the water pipes in your house. It comes from the reservoir where there's a a head pressure which creates a pressure difference between the water in the reservoir and the atmospheric pressure and it comes into what's called a header. In electrical terms it's commonly called a bus or a rail but in water it's called a header. Then off this header you'll have a tap that goes to say your laundry trough you'll have another tap which goes to your kitchen sink you'll have another tap that goes to your shower and so on and so forth notice that they all come off the same header the pressure difference between there and the tap must always be the same because it's off the same header but the flows through here can be different you can have that tap open and those taps closed and the flow will be different that is a characteristic of a parallel circuit whether it is a water circuit or whether it is electrical circuit or hydraulic or whatever pressure difference between the supply and the end point same pressure or same voltage at each switch or outlet and the flows can be different. Right, let's see how that looks in an electrical circuit. OK, let's go back to our battery. Remember the symbol for a battery? Two lines. Then we had our switch there. Then we came down 
and we had our LED in there. This was B1, switch 1, Q1. Turn the switch on. That's indicated a closed switch is indicated like that on the circuit. Electricity will flow through there, the light will glow. That's okay for a single circuit. But what if you want to do something like I did here and put two globes or two lights in parallel. This is how we draw that. They're drawn thusly with the diode in there. Now this word I would call Q2. Q is just a name often given to semiconductors in a drawing. You could call it LED1 or whatever you like. Now, obviously when that switch is open, both of those lights will go out. So let's remove that switch from there. Continue that line through and we'll put another switch in here. Now if you turn that switch off, that light will go off, but that one won't because the circuit is still closed around there. So let's fix that. And we'll put another switch there, we'll call that switch 1, switch 2, just to designate them. And that is a parallel circuit. So just for fun, let's get rid of the battery. We'll put an AC circuit in there. We can't draw a generator, obviously. So we use this symbol as a generator, or as an alternator, I should say. The squiggly line is what's called the sinusoidal waveform. That is the waveform of AC, and we'll do something a little bit on that later, but we don't want to get bogged down in it now. But that is where that symbol comes from. For a, And just out of curiosity, I'll draw you the symbol for a generator. Now, there's several. It can be a G in there, or it can have brushes, or it can have both. So this time we're just doing a symbol for an alternator. And let's take that LED out of there because it won't work on AC. And in there we will put my toaster. Now I can't draw a toaster but a resistive load, which is what a toaster in is, is often drawn thusly or it can be drawn like that. Either way is okay. So there's my toaster. And we'll take that out. That LED out of there. A jug is also a resistive load. So we'll draw that using the other symbol. They're interchangeable. Different people draw them different ways. And we'll call that a jug. And then this is how it was set up on the kitchen bench where I had it set up. With my isolating switch, one in the power point. This is where the power point was here. There's the isolating switch. There's the other isolating switch. This is where it's plugged in for the jug and the toaster, and that is all there is to it.